raise your hands if you're dealing with difficult people in your life right now. Okay. Now, those of you who did not raise your hands, you are those difficult people. That would be it. <laughs> Guys, we're looking at each other, I can tell. How many people here have ever been right? You know who you are. Come on, right. <laughs> really right. How many of you have been so right nobody would talk to you? That kind of right. <laughs> I explained how right I was, how wrong he was, and I was so convincing he agreed. <laughs> yeah. And then he, he quit. <laughs> <laughs> Went to work for the competition. Now, later that week when I was forced to clean out my desk, it dawned on me. It dawned on me, maybe I want to be effective rather than just right. Now, some of the most difficult, some of the most difficult people we deal with on a regular basis, the most difficult, are know-it-all experts. How many of you are dealing with a know-it-all expert in your life right now? And how many of you actually married one? God bless you, that'll happen. See some of this. And I learned a very valuable lesson, and that is, if you criticize others' ideas, they'll almost never use yours, no matter how good they are. And I was the boss. 27 years old and the boss, oh yeah, young boss. Got any young bosses out here? Oh yeah, I'm young and I'm the boss. And you are not the boss, yes. Yep, and I got to work and all of my employees were older than I was, oh yeah, young boss. And I got to work that first day and I met my people, I called them my people, I said, people, I will lead you to the promised land of success. All your hopes and dreams and ideas, forget about all that. We're going to do things a special way. And that way is called my way. And if it's not my way, it's the... Was I effective? No. I saw a memo between two employees that referred to me as pump boy manager. So it's kind of hard to wield authority in that situation. But I learned another very valuable lesson. And that is if you make people feel important, you and what you have to offer will be important to them. Because in reality, people don't choose what's best. They choose what they're the most comfortable with, whether it's the best or not. Remember the TV show Flipper? <laughs> and what kind of noise did Flipper make? <laughs> wow. It's a whole Flipper segment right, right in here. Isn't it? A school of flippers, literally a school of flippers. That is exactly the noise a flipper made on the night. You guys are way too skilled at that. Just like you've been practicing in the parking lot before I showed up. Anyway. So who had the communication problem? Big lesson. Every single human being you'll ever meet for the rest of your life knows something you don't. You ever seen something you've never seen before, but you just know it's wrong? Maybe you're walking through your house and the kids are, you're like, whatever that is, that is wrong. Stop that. I have no idea what that is. Stop that. I don't know what it is, but put it down. It's bad. It's wrong. Stop. How many people here have teenagers? I notice the head goes down. I got them. Come get them. The head kind of goes down. My teenager came up to me and said, Daddy, I've made a decision. I'm going to go ahead and dye my hair green. And I'm going to get a little neck tattoo right here. It's got the shirt that comes to here and the skirt starts there. Like, when's that coming back together? At some point, will that come back together? When is that coming back together? Is that coming back? Right? And short skirt and fishnet stockings. I said, son, no way. There is no way you're leaving the house like that. No way. If I could, if I could just get you back on drugs. Let's go back to drugs. Go back to drugs and we'll work our way down, maybe. <laughs> yep, true story. <laughs> My dad is 78 years old and online all the time. 78 years old and on the computer all the time. Amazing. But three years ago, he sent me his very first email. <laughs> he just said, damn it. That was his first email. <laughs> That's all he said. But my dad, my dad knows, my dad knows that action and adaptability create opportunity. My dad said the reason that I wanted to learn how to use a computer, because I didn't like living in a world where I could not use the tool of the day. If you didn't know how to use a shovel and you've been digging a hole with your hands all your life, can you compete? No, you can be the best hand hole digging guy in town. But this person with the shovel is just going to outproduce you. Put your hands up again. Go like this. Now go like this. Go like this. 
reverse your thumbs like this. What does that feel like? Weird, different, odd. This is what change feels like. If we stood here just like this for the next two hours, we'd learn two very valuable lessons. Number one is we have nothing really happening in our lives, got nothing going. <laughs> the second thing we'd notice is it would start to feel about the same after a while. Why is that? Because change is not the problem. It's resistance to change that's the issue. It's our personal resistance. So we look at the top performers and how they got people to change. And here's the issue with change. Most people go, look, here's the old way that you're doing, and here's the new way we want to talk about. The new way is new. That's why they call it the new way. And it's better and faster and cheaper and lemon fresh and whatever it is, right? That's what they say. And then what do the people say? I don't care. I'm, I'm old school. I like old stuff. I'm, I want it old. I'm old. I like old stuff. I'm just an old person. I like to put the you know, white out on the computer screen. I'm just an old person. I don't care. So we looked at the top 1% and how were they able to get people to change, and it was completely different. They started off with the old way. You've been doing this for 20 years or 10 years or whatever it is, and there's a reason you do it, and here are the reasons that make perfect sense. Agree with them on the reasons. Here's why you do it. It's fantastic. But also, let me show you how the new way and the old way that you've been doing are very similar, and they draw the similarities and show how the old way and the new way are very much alike. Once there's agreement on that, and they show them why the new way might have some benefit. So it's similarities first and differences second. Similarities first and differences second. A very simple concept, but it's what the top 1% did differently than the bottom 99%. We have a choice. We have a choice. You see, I, for instance, choose not to eat spam. Some reasons for that. You ever read the back of a can of spam and read that? Oh, man. It says, may contain three or more of the following ingredients. And that means they don't know. They don't know. It may not contain that. We don't know. And what does it say? Two words. It says pork parts. That's all it says, pork parts. What part of the pork are we talking about here? I have to know the part of the pork. But the real reason, you know that gelatin-like substance that used to slide it into the can? Yeah. I just refuse to eat any food that comes with its own lubricant. There's no way. No way. No way. And that includes Vienna sausage and the entire lubricated food group, the entire thing. There's no way. Vienna sausage? Come on. What's the Vienna sausage? This whole area right here, you guys, man. Somebody cook something for over here for some time. Good Lord. Got a whole canned meat section right there. It's amazing. So, I have a choice. I can slide through the cracks of life with all the losers and the victims and poor me and the market did it and there was bad information and the internet people were wacky and the dot coms are dumb and all this stuff. Or I can stand firm and make the well-informed decisions I've paid for with my life experience. But it's not just about learning from our mistakes. It's about not being so afraid to make those mistakes because somebody's gonna tell you one day, hey, how'd you get so good at what you do? You say, well, I made every mistake I could possibly make and there was nothing left to do but succeed. <laughs> If some of the things we talked about here today sound like you've heard them before, they may feel like common sense. There's a reason it feels that way. It's because it's true. And we know it's true. We know if we treat people really well, consistently, that they will do more of what we ask. Great organizations are not driven by vision. They're driven by leaders. Be one, and the vision will show up. And that is the truth about success. I'm Garrison Wynn. Thank you so much. Thank you.